Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video today I'm going to be showing you some of the best methods to emulate your old PlayStation 1 games on your PC. Now there are a few ways in which to do this and I'm going to be showing you some of the very best ones available to you as this isn't just a case of one fix does all. So without further ado here's some of the best options out there for you to emulate your PlayStation 1 games on the PC. With this option we're firstly going to go to the RetroArch website, download the program and then install it. Once downloaded we're going to double click and open her up and she should look something like this. Now what we're going to do is look for Core Downloader. These are where the RetroArch has its emulators for all these systems. And what we're going to look for is PSX Beetle Core which is here. Now, as you can see, there are two versions of this, and you're probably wondering what the difference is. Well, if you download the HW version, this is a more advanced and improved version than the original Beetle Core shown below. The HW version comes with a few more options, like anti-analyzing, and a couple of different shaders, and other features as well. For this video, I'm going to recommend that you download the HW version. So for now, click here, and this should automatically download and install itself. Once this is done, I recommend that you update everything else in RetroArch, and to do this, we're going to go to Online Updater, Update Assets, Core Files, Shaders, Databases, and whatever else you think may need possibly updating. Then once that's done, we're going to exit and close the program. It's at this point things get a tad complicated, as we're going to need a BIOS in order for the emulator to run, and the problem with the Beetle Core is that you can't just put any old BIOS into the system. For Beetle Core, you need three very specific files, and because YouTube is YouTube, I'm not allowed to give you those. I can, however, add this and show you which three files you are going to need, though. So now, with this knowledge in hand, you should be able to do a quick Google search and find these files that you need. Once you then have those files, we're going to be placing them into RetroArch's systems folder. Now that this is done, we're going to reopen RetroArch, and once reopened, the program should automatically detect the BIOS that you've now added. At this point, you should be able to play a game that you have made a dump file from. To do this, we select Core Loader, and you should just see Beetle Core, because that should be the only one that at the moment you have downloaded and installed. Once you select that, we then back up to the main screen, and then we're going to select Load Content, and then navigate to where your dump files are, and then select what game you want to play. Hypothetically speaking, everything should have worked fine, and the game you selected should have loaded. However, this program can be quite temperamental for a lot of people out there, and once they get to this stage, the final step, what they're greeted to, is nothing but a black screen. The issue here is down to rather a few problems, and to pinpoint which one it is for each individual, it's quite difficult to narrow down. This black screen issue can be down to a number of reasons, such as the shaders needed to be switched off, telling RetroArch where the BIOS is manually, even though it claims it can already see where they are, changing Vulkan to OpenGL, or possibly down to what type of dump file that you have created from your games. The thing with the PS1 file type is that there's rather a few options from which format can be created. You can have bin in queue, ISO, image, and even a few others. So for some users out there, one version might not work, while another will. You're just going to have to test and find which one works best for you for Beetle Core. Alright, well if Beetle Core didn't work for you, then here is option 2. For this method we're going to open a browser and we're going to go to this website here. We're going to click on downloads and select which version it is that you are after for your system. Once that's been downloaded and installed we're going to select here, open up the program and make sure that it's been installed correctly and see that it opens up and works right. Once this is done we're going to close the program and then we're going to select the BIOS folder. Yet again, I'm not allowed to give you these, 
but you can search for them yourself. Once you do have the correct BIOS version required, simply place it in the BIOS folder and then reopen the program once again. Once opened, if we select here, then you're going to go down to the video settings and you're going to be given a huge range of options. I know at first that this might look daunting, but for the most part, you shouldn't really have to mess with this too much. So for now, we'll simply just leave everything here as it is. To load a game, what we're going to do is go to File, and we're going to select ISO. From here, you're going to navigate to the folder where you've placed your games, and they should boot up without issue. The program is able to play most file types without any issue, so it shouldn't really have a problem with image, bin Q, or any other files that you've made. Again, hypothetically speaking, this should work fine, and your games should load without a hitch. But for some games however, and some users, there are quite a few known problems, with the most being the green lines effect. This is where in certain games such as Final Fantasy VII or Ridge Racer Revolution, you get green lines appearing in place where they shouldn't be. Fixing this bug is trial and error, but for the most part I've been told that if you do go back to the video settings, you select the texture options, and you then turn settings down to 2 or 3, this should fix a glitch. However, if you are still getting some glitches in games, even after this fix, I recommend that you turn down all the features in the video settings, and then test each one individually until you find the culprit of what's causing your problem. Okay, here is our final option if for some reason neither of those two previous ones worked for you. For this method, what we're going to do is follow the first steps of setting up and installing RetroArch. Once this has been done, we're going to up RetroArch and we're going to go back and look at cores. This time we're going to look and find PSX rearmed. Now once this is set up and downloaded, we're going to follow the same previous steps that we did before with Beetlecore, but for the rearmed BIOS. Once we have those in place, and they're in the systems folder, we're simply going to reopen the program. Select the core, and then select content that your game is in, and that you're wanting to load. Rearmed is much simpler and easier to use, but be aware that you won't get any of the upgrade options, so sadly no anti-analyzing or a few other features. The games will just work, but they just don't look very good. But this is a method that you have available to you of option 1 and 2 didn't work. Well, that's it for this video guys, that should be everything that really you need to play PS1 games on your PC. I hope that this video did help people out there, and if you do have any issues or any problems, just leave a message below in the comments section, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and please subscribe.